The Lord of the Flies. I think probably a lot of you have read this when you were teenagers. Um, I read it when I was a teenager, and I liked it, and uh, I took it as an adventure story. I knew that, you know, it had a message, and I thought the message was that uh, underlyingly people are animals, and it doesn't take long for them to lose the pattern of civilization. It seemed a little banal to me, but, you know, it's a good adventure story. And later I, I heard that it won the Nobel Prize, and I was like, that won the Nobel Prize? Gee, you know, that's, that's odd. You probably know that this is about a group of boys who are, who are um, in a plane and it crashes on, a, on an island and all the adults are, are killed and it's just the boys there. And so um, the, the novel chronicles the way that those boys gradually move from having fallen into an island paradise to becoming really, really savage and doing some horrible things. Well, I reread it last March, I think it was, or sometime, sometime around then, and it was during the time that the, the country was moving towards this war in Iraq. And I'm reading the papers, and then I'm looking over here and I'm reading this. The book revolves around the fact that these boys become terrified, and then they come to have the notion that there's a beast on the island. And what happens as a result of their terror is something that made me, when I looked at the news, realize that this book is not about what we would do if we lost civilization. It's about the way we are as civilized beings. And once I, I flipped over into that way of looking at it, I found it terrifying to read page after page because it just seemed so incisive, analytical, and, and I dreaded reading more as I dreaded experiencing more of what was going on. And I'm, I'm just going to read a little bit. I, I feel like it's cumulative and there's, there's no little passage that can really, uh, that can really convey what it is. Uh, but this is a, a, a part where, around the middle, they have one imperative, which is to keep a, a fire going on a, on a hill so that there will be smoke if a ship goes by. Uh, it'll see them. But over the course of this time, there's a boy named Jack who has found that, uh, you know, it's a real thrill to kill pigs. There are pigs on this island. And uh, some of the other boys are going more and more into the pig hunting, less and less into tending the fire. So they're having this meeting, um, and there's, there are some rules. One of them is you can't speak unless you have this certain shell, a conch shell. And the talk has turned to the beast that's on the island. And somebody says, well, maybe that beast is a ghost. And Ralph, the chosen leader of this band of boys, says there's too much talk about ghosts. We ought to have left all this for daylight. A hushed and anonymous voice broke in. Perhaps that's what the beast is, a ghost. The assembly was shaken as by a wind. There's too much talking out of turn, Ralph said, because we can't have proper assemblies if you don't stick to the rules. He stopped again. The careful plan of this assembly had broken down. What do you want me to say then? I was wrong to call this assembly so late. We'll have to vote on them, on ghosts I mean, and then go to the shelters because we're all tired. No, Jack is it? Wait a minute, I'll say here and now that I don't believe in ghosts, or I don't think I do, but I don't like the thought of them. Not now, that is, in the dark. But we were going to decide what's what. He raised the conch for a moment. Very well, then. I suppose what's what is whether there are ghosts or not. He thought for a moment, formulating the question. Who thinks there may be ghosts? For a long time, there was silence and no apparent movement. Then Ralph peered into the gloom and made out the hands. He spoke flatly. I see. The world that was understandable and lawful, the world, that understandable and lawful world, was slipping away. Once there was this and that, and now, and the ship had gone. They, there was a ship that came close by, but it, it didn't see them because the fire had gone out. The conch was snatched from his hands, and Piggy's voice shrilled, I didn't vote for no ghosts. He whirled round on the assembly. Remember that, all of you, they heard him stamp. What are we, humans, or animals, or savages? What's grown-ups going to think, going off, hunting pigs, letting fires out, and now? 
A shadow fronted him tempestuously. You shut up, you fat slug. There was a moment's struggle, and the glimmering conch jigged up and down. Ralph leapt to his feet. Jack, Jack, you haven't got the conch. Let him speak. Jack's voice swam near him. And you shut up. Who are you, anyway, sitting there telling people what to do? You can't hunt. You can't sing. I'm chief. I was chosen. Why should choosing make any difference? Just giving orders that don't make any sense. Piggy's got the conch. That's right. Favor Piggy, as you always do. Jack. Jack's voice sounded in bitter mimicry. Jack, Jack. The rules, shouted Ralph. You're breaking the rules. Who cares? Ralph summoned his wits. Because the rules are the only thing we've got. But Jack was shouting against him. Bollocks to the rules. We're strong. We hunt. If there's a beast, we'll hunt it down. We'll close in and beat and beat and beat. He gave a wild whoop and leaped down to the pale sand. At once, the platform was full of noise and excitement, scrambling, screams, and laughter. The assembly shredded away and became a discursive and random scatter from the palms to the water and away along the beach beyond night sight. Ralph found his cheek touching the conch and took it from Piggy. What's grown-ups going to say? cried Piggy again.